welcome to another edition of the In Search SEO podcast, where we paint the town red with search marketing insights. Great, awesome, super fun guest for you today is Corey Graft of Sierra Interactive. Joins the show to talk about how to analyze the competitive field at the local level. What metrics should you focus on when analyzing the local competition? How to find, analyze, and track local competitors at scale, and what going beyond proximity means for your local competition analysis. Plus, we have the data. Jump into the data on the recent January 2020 core update. I am your host, Morty Overstein. I am joined by the venerated, the scholarly Sapir Carabello. That's it. That's all you get. <laughs> what, you're not going to roast me today for my musical taste? What musical taste? <laughs> well, the... I oh. <laughs> <laughs> got you. <laughs> I got hey, you. I have a great musical taste. Sure you do. Taste. Sure you do. I do. Every mo- yeah, I wake up in the morning and say, <laughs> Sapir, I have wonderful <laughs> musical taste because I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and gosh darn it, People like me. You have no idea where that's from either, do you? I have no idea. Saturday Night Live. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay. Do not forget. Okay. We put out a new episode (laughs) of the In Search (laughs) SEO podcast each and every Tuesday. You can find it on Stitcher. You can find it on SoundCloud. You can find it on Spotify. You can, of course, find it on the Rank Ranger blog. And you may and should and hopefully will subscribe on iTunes. Also, do not forget when you want to track your competitors from local rank to locally served ads to local performance, you want Rank Ranger for tracking your local competitors. Check out our reports at rankranger.com. Yep. They don't pay me to say that. They pay me to do everything else also, which includes saying that. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm not paid just for that, is what I'm trying to say. I'm Thanks paid for, for I'm paid for all of it. Okay. Yep. <laughs> or as I like to say every week. Well, not on the air. I say it to myself every week. I hope they buy a Rank Ranger so I have food on my table for my kids. You don't want starving kids in the overseen household, so buy a Rank Ranger. Uh-huh. Is that an emotional it is. twist? I'm I have lovely myself. children. Yes. They need to eat. That's true. They love to eat <laughs> and throw food. My my one and a half year old's new thing is to throwing food across the table. Then the three year old throws food back at him. It's a whole. It's a. Lovely. It's a shit show. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> great show for you today. I had an absolute blast talking to Corey Graff. Some very unique insights that blew my mind. So don't turn that dial, as we must, 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 oh, must God. talk about the giant, the gargantuan, the <laughs> January 2020 core update. Who got hit and how bad? Because we are going data. Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Get on up. It's core update time. What? You never <laughs> saw cool runnings. What? You never saw cool runnings. <laughs> Feel the rhythm. Feel the rhyme. Get on up. It's bobsled time. Cool runnings. You never saw that? No. Your childhood sucked. <laughs> I was probably not even alive, Holy right? Holy crap. When it came out or something. If there's one thing consistent about you, is that you never (laughs) cease to blow my mind week in and week out of what you have not seen. Cool Runnings, you have to watch it. You will enjoy every second of it. I I doubt it. I promise you. No, it's a classic. Maybe my kid... Forget it. Holy... (laughs) Moving on. Big update. Big update. Sapir never saw Cool Runnings. Big core update. Yes. One of the biggest we've seen in a bit. So Mm -hmm. let's get into it, yes? Yeah. Okay. Item number one. As with the core updates in general... The data we pulled shows the health and finance niche got clobbered or saw tremendous reversals of fortune because, remember, increases in rank volatility work in both directions. The volatility could either mean that there were sites that got hit. It could also mean that there were sites that got um, boosted up the SERP. Mm -hmm. That said, um, (laughs) what makes the core updates, by the way, okay, so one of the things that makes the core updates really, really unique, even from the more powerful unconfirmed updates is the top of the SERP impact of the core updates. The core updates tend to um, have a different pattern of their their impactfulness. That's a real word. I feel like George W. Bush (laughs) when I say their impactfulness um, at the top of the SERP. Um, For that, or to that, finance, the finance needs, saw a 15% increase in rank volatility at the very first position on the SERP. While the health niche saw a 19% percent increase in rank volatility rank fluctuations at the very first 
position on the SERP, which is bizarre. Not for core updates, that's normal, but in general, it's very bizarre to see the kind of movement at the top, the very first position on the SERP. Because mm-hmm. you know, it's number one. It should be pretty stable. We should be able to get that right for Google. It's clearly not for health and finance niche um, sites. Clearly. Yeah, clearly. Okay. Um, that was the general pattern until we got to the third position. That's one, two, three. I can count. Oh, wow. Yep. Look at I can you. go on. I could have been an accountant. <laughs> you can? Mm-hmm. No, that's surprising. Yes, it is. Cool runnings. <laughs> Third position here, okay, I studied four niches, health, finance, travel, and retail. Um, when you get to the third position, the retail and travel niches caught up to the um, fluctuations or increase in volatility seen by the YMYL niches. The, the, the travel niche saw a 16% increase in rank volatility, and the retail niche saw a 17% increase in volatility um, for that same position, the third position, the health and finance niches were double that. But you finally started to see the retail niche and travel niche show those big sort of rank volatility numbers only at the third position. Rank uh, Position one and two were, there were increases in volatility, but not crazy. Right. And I know what you're saying, some of you at home or in your car, in your office or wherever you are, at a bar, at a coffee shop, at a movie theater, listening to this podcast, that makes no sense. Um, <laughs> Retail is a YMYL niche. That's true, but Google has said that it treats commerce sites differently than other categories, hmm. which makes sense because, for, say, for the health niche, right? I'm, I'm looking for a, um, a cure for cancer or a cancer treatment. Let's be realistic, yeah? Um, I'm looking up um, certain treatments for cancer. In that moment, like, you know, how do, I, what, how do I eat better? Let's be more specific. How do I eat better if I'm undergoing chemotherapy for cancer? The content in that case is the product, right? Like, there's no difference between the content and the product. What you want is the content. Right. Okay? When you're talking about a commerce site, let's say, I don't know, um, Bob's Boots. Bob sells the best boots. Right. Get your boots at Bob's. It was Bob's Apples before. I, Bo- I like the name like Bob. Bob. I yeah. do like the name Bob. <laughs> right. My kids will ask me, like, what was his name? I'm like, Bob. <laughs> 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 they already know, like, you're full of crap. Oh, God. So Bob's boots, mm-hmm. okay, the product is not content. You would hope it's boots. So it makes sense that Google treats commerce differently where the content is not the product right. versus niches where Y and Y on niches where the content is a product. Okay. That said, once we start looking at the ten the top ten results overall, mm-hmm. all insanity breaks out insane to the membrane insane got no brain you don't know that either okay i know uh, eminem has like a whatever <laughs> Never mind. Right. here are the numbers the increases in rank volatility for the top 10 results for each of the niches i looked at are you ready drum roll ow <laughs> travel niche 82 percent increase oh. in rank volatility oh, overall wow. all top 10 results that's crazy that's insane, that's insane. okay Retail niche, 55% increase. A little bit lower. <laughs> Finance, 87%. And health saw a 92% <gasps> increase in rank volatility pre-update during the update. Oh, wow. From pre-update to during the update. Yeah. It is insane. That's insane. Now you can say, oh, well, the travel niche and the finance niche and the health niche are all sort of in the same ballpark. But again, remember, top of the SERP, travel didn't see those rank volatility numbers. Right. Right. It's insane. It is. Now. <laughs> now. Now. Those numbers are nuts, but rank volatility is all relative. There's no, like, objective number. You have to compare it to a baseline. From the baseline, which is normal, what does this look like? How volatile is this? Right. Okay. That said, to help understand the relative size of the January 2020 core update, uh, Rank Ranger founder Shai Harrell was like, hey, Morty, there was an unconfirmed update on December 6th. Why don't you go ahead and compare That to the 2020 core update, the January 2020 core update. And I was like, heck, that's a great idea. Isn't that a great story? Yeah. Really interesting. Mm -hmm. Almost as good as one of your childhood trauma stories. You don't even know my childhood trauma stories. (laughs) You keep bringing it up. I bring them up. I will not tell you the stories. (laughs) Just watch some horrible movie about someone's horrible childhood and that'll be my life. Okay. (laughs) Um, A few things here. Not in my childhood trauma, but in the <laughs> in the, in the data. Right. And um, when comparing you. the, there was an unco- let's go back. There was an unconfirmed update on December sixth. 
You can catch um, coverage of it on SC Roundtable by Barry Schwartz. There was chatter. The tools went up, blah, blah, blah. So what I did was I compared what were the rank volatility increases seen during the unconfirmed December 6th update versus the rank volatility increases seen here during the 20, January 2020 update. Right. And then we could see like, how how big of a badass mother was the January 2020 <sighs> update. PG-13, yeah. PG-13, we don't say the F word. Yeah. Not on air. <laughs> I'm from New York, so it's part of my vocabulary when I say like when I order coffee, but on the air, we don't use it. Lovely. Mm-hmm. I, have respect <laughs> for the, I respect you, the audience, and your ears. <laughs> Although you are listening to my voice for a half hour, so... My ears There's are that. bleeding. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. You knew a joke was coming. <laughs> anyway, here's the data. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual data, niche by niche, query by query. No, not query by query. What am I talking about? Niche by niche, update by update. Shall we? Yeah. Okay. Travel niche. Top 10 results. Top 10 results overall. The travel niche saw a 40% increase in rank volatility during the December 6th update. Mm-hmm. As I mentioned, it's on an 82% increase during the 20... I keep saying... The, I keep forgetting the month. The January 2020 core update. Right. It's too much to say. January 20... That never sh- bothered you before. No, no, but, but in one breath. <laughs> Focus on the data. Focus, Focus on the data. Right, right. Retail niche. Here's yeah. an interesting one. Top 10 results overall. December saw a 60% increase mm-hmm. and a 55% increase in January. Oh, interesting. So a little bit more in, in, in December. I right. have to research that when I have time. It could be that um, the the 20, the, gosh, the names, the December 6 unconfirmed update perhaps had a focus on commerce sites. That's why you see that. Mm-hmm. It's an aberration. It happens. It doesn't mean that the December 6 update is more powerful. Not at all. Okay. Finance. Finance saw a 64% increase over the top 10 results during this December 6 update. And as I mentioned, an 87% increase here in January. Right. Health. Health saw a 57% increase across the top 10 results in December and a whopping 92% increase here in January. If you're not good at <laughs> mathematication, just know that the increases you're seeing in January are about 100% more volatile than you're seeing in December. Okay, so if you don't like numbers or mathem- mathematics, mathematication, <laughs> January was about 100% more volatile than December overall. Insane. That's Crazy. insane. Very exciting. Very exciting. Very exciting. Yeah, I love, uh, of I course, love how unless, excited you are about this. Okay, but yeah, please note, okay, <laughs> if, despite my excitement, if your site lost rankings, I do feel bad and that sucks. So we have to temper our excitement. <laughs> Right. No, for real. Like, why are you yeah. laughing? Someone's like, yeah, he's right. I just got killed and you're just up here laughing at me. Maybe she should go watch Cool Runnings right about now. I'm <laughs> sorry. Senka, you're dead man. Yeah, I'm on. Oh, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, Hopefully in the coming days, I'm already started working on this. I'll have a full write-up with all the data. You can look at the graphs. They're beautiful. They're wonderful. You'll see the comparisons. You'll see the data. You'll have a good time. And you'll... um. Bring some traffic to Rank Ranger, and maybe you'll buy a package. Right. Uh, right. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Let's get right to the end. Okay. Um, funny story, by the way, about how all Another this- one. Yes. Um, oh, I, scratch. I, I forgot something. Okay. I, I, know, I knew I wanted to share the story, but I had it to be attached to something else, which I didn't say, so it doesn't make any sense. Okay. I'm not making any sense right now, right? You never <laughs> I are, know. so just Ooh, that's so uh, funny. spit it out already. Cool runnings. Um. <laughs> If you want to see what I think you should be looking at if you were hit by a core update, I have two posts on this. Um, you can just Google or go to Rank Ranger and go again, just Google. Is Google profiling my site? We have a whole uh, post I did back in 2018 after the medic update about Google profiling your site. And there's another post I did um, called Why is Google hitting YMYL sites with the core updates? All right. Um, if you Google both, it'll come up. If you go to Rank Ranger and put in, you know, in the search box for the blog, you know, profiling site, it'll come up. Whatever it is, find it or link to it in this blog post. Nice. Yes. Um, so that's what I think you should be doing because I'm not going to spend time going into it. You just read the post. Funny story, though, how we came up, though, with site profiling, our concept of site profiling and focusing on your core intent profile. Mm-hmm. Um this all started after the medic update. So uh, we were looking at sites. I was looking at a bunch of sites that were impacted, and it looked like there's a lot of ads. Okay, I, 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 scratch reverse. I'll give you a very, very brief overview of what I think you should be doing. You should be focusing on your core intent profile. You should be focusing in on 
how authoritative do I sound? How trustworthy do I sound? Not just do I sound, but how, how trustworthy and authoritative does my site come off? Imagine you're a user. I'll give you an example. Looking at a website. Uh, for health information, and there's CTAs and internal links all pointing to products and banner ads for products. How would that come off to the user? What message does that subliminally send to the user? Oh, you're really not a health content site, informational site. You just want me to buy your product. Right. Okay, so think about how you're coming off. That's what I'm at, right? right. And you can read those posts to go into the details about that. And we call it site profiling and sticking to your core intent profile. And that all came about after the medic update. I was looking at a bunch of sites. I'm like, okay, all these sites have a lot of ads or, you know, or, or, or weird placement of ads. I'm like, but something's off because it doesn't seem just like about having too many ads because there are other sites mixed in that didn't make any sense. The sites that had a lot of CTAs, let's say, or a lot of sites that had um, a lot of internal links, like I mentioned, pointing towards a product. I'm talking about it with Shai Harrell, founder of Rank Ranger. He's like, you know what it seems like? He goes, it seems like Google's profiling your site. I'm like, yes, that is exactly what I'm thinking. Like, you know, when you, you know that experience where you have an idea in your head, but you don't have the right words for it. Mm -hmm. So that's how site profiling came about. We wrote, we wrote a whole post all about site profiling, how Google's almost treating your site like an entity and, and profiling who you are, what you're doing, and are you aligned to what you say you're doing. And... When we released that post, it still wasn't really refined. I just, I just, I, I like the story because it really shows like how ideas get refined by other people. Mm -hmm. We put the post out there, and uh, Alita Solis retweeted it, saying, "Oh, new post by Rank Ranger, awesome post, whatever it was." Um, st you know, moral of the story is stick to your core intent profile. I'm like, yes, like that's exactly what I mean by having a uncomplicated, unconflicting, non-conflicting profile of what you're doing don't be a commerce site. don't be a informational site trying to sell something subliminally or right. subtly right. a core intent profile that makes a ton of sense mm -hmm. so that's how we got to the idea of core intent profile that that term analogy came from alita solis so it's cool to see how like how you have an idea it's, it's raw and how it gets refined along the way the moral of the story is if you have a new idea and you want to write about it write about it if you can't describe it you know in, in refined terms Maybe someone else will come along who will. Right. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why we keep on Dennis Wormall. All right. That said, it's time to continue the Women in Search SEO series with a wonderfully smart SEO as well as an avid Philly sports fan, which basically means, in case you don't know. I don't know. That, that, sh that if you're a Philly sports fan, you are a fan of the lesser <laughs> um, sports city in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh being the much better one. That's a dig there to Philly. Okay. It also means that when you win championships, you burn your own city down. Yes, that's also a dig to Philly sports fans. <laughs> Though I do have nothing against Philly in general. I right. love Philly. Well, are you done? I'm done. Okay. So here's Corey Graf on analyzing the local competition scene cut one. Welcome to another In Search SEO podcast interview session. Today we have with you the senior team lead at Seer Interactive. She's an industry speaker as well as an avid lover of good beer. God bless you. She is Corey Graft. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. No, my pleasure. I, I'm, you're a Philly sports fan and you like craft beer, so you're very much welcome here. <laughs> That's so, good to know. Thanks for uh, not banning me or judging me for the Philly sports. No, 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 uh, no. Contentious topic sometimes. <laughs> That's cool. It's cool. I mean, like I'm a Rangers fan for hockey, so like it's a little bit of bad blood, but it's okay. It's okay. We'll let it slide. All I have right. to ask you though, like, so you like craft beer and you like Philly sports. So if I'm putting two and two together, does that mean that while you're burning down your city after winning a Super Bowl, you're drinking good beer? Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really? Nothing wrong with burning down your city after winning. What is that? I, I have to explain that, by the way. People who are not sports fans, Philadelphia fans, when they won the Super Bowl a few years ago, was it two years ago already, they burned down their yeah, own city. I don't get that. Usually when you lose, you do that. So I actually, this is a really funny story. Um, I was actually downtown for that when that happened. Oh, um I was at a friend's house watching the uh, watching the game, and I had broken my leg and torn my ACL and decorated um, my crutches in tape, oh, in cool. eagle tape. Nice. So, like, I was all decked out, you know, trying to be festive, you know, make the best out of the situation. Uh, but when we won, um, we walked, I'll use that very loosely, walked um, 
two miles into the center of the city just to be part of the festivities. Mm -hmm. And I like crushed the entire way there. Wow. It was one of the prouder moments of my sports fandom. Um, but it was honestly, I've never seen the city happier. It, people were so <laughs> supportive. People were loving it. Like it was just, I mean, you know, when like celebrations get a little rowdy and like right. somebody trashes the house at a, that the party is right. at, like that's basically what was happening. Just, just like burning, burning city. garbage trucks. I get it. No, it makes, yeah, it makes total yeah. sense. It's very it was, festive. I understand your definition fun, of festive in Philly is very <laughs> different. <laughs> that's fair it's, uh, it's, uh, only it's, place like it on earth I'll it's very that. special <laughs> but i love it <laughs> <laughs> okay so we could talk about philadelphia and it's a uh, peculiar way of celebrating for a while but we're here to talk about um local competitive insights and i have to ask you off the bat why are we talking about local competitive insights and not just competitive insights yeah um so short answer there's a lot of different levers that you can pull local that don't always translate to uh, the more traditional aspects of SEO. Um, so I'm thinking of, you know, the basics, the obvious, like NAP consistency, which debatably is or isn't as important as it used to be. But looking at things like engaging parts of the listings, like photos and user signals like that, that are a little bit tougher to measure and um, see on the surface that uh, have, have really shown in our research to make a pretty big difference when it comes to outranking competitors. Okay. So again, just to sort of give like a basic introduction, when you're looking at the local competitive field, what are the, the very foundational aspects of a, a, or foundational metrics that you're looking at when analyzing a um, competitor? Yeah. So we pull a ton of data. Um, we use a tool called Places Scout to collect pretty much as much data as we possibly can. Um, so we're looking at link metrics. We're looking at um, on-page content, you know, all the traditional uh, SEO metrics that you would typically look at in a Kind of traditional competitive analysis but on the local side of things we're also looking at a uh, number of photos um, photo views review counts actual star ratings we're looking at that's that's the i think the baseline to start mm -hmm. but really we're just looking for any data point that we can that we can find to help us understand what might be giving people an edge um, also looking at the words that people use in reviews Proximity is obviously a big piece of this too, even though it's not really something that we can influence directly, um, but really as much data as we possibly can to just crunch it and see what correlates. So you're looking at actual number of images within a profile? Like you go to the local panel and mm -hmm. see that you have like, you know, 50 images in there? Wow. Yep. How does yeah. that play itself out? Um, we've actually, yeah, so we've seen, that's an interesting one I would like to dive more into with the data that we have, um, but we have seen that engagement signals as a whole really seem to be improving um, and increasing in, in prevalence when it comes to kind of being the difference makers when it comes to ranking. So, you know, when I think of what an engagement signal actually is, um, things that I can see on the outside from a competitive view are uh, reviews and review responses. So how often a uh, business owner is actually jumping in and responding to the positive and the negative reviews that they're receiving. Um, I can look at the number of photos that someone has taken the time to upload. Um, user photos are also an interesting angle to look at. So are people taking the time to leave reviews and add a photo with those reviews and just kind of optimize the listing and make it a little bit more richer than it would be um, and kind of stand out from competitors. But uh, that that's all on the outside. And then internally with our, with our own data that we have for our own clients, um, we're able to look at listings that receive clicks for driving directions tend to rank better than listings that don't. That's definitely a causation correlation question, but oh, that's cool. um, it does make a pretty good case that uh, people actually interacting and clicking around on your listing seems to improve its visibility. That makes a lot of sense. The direction thing makes a lot of sense from a user perspective. I would definitely be more inclined to, to want a, um, a listing that had directions within it. I'm curious, like, how do you go about so that you have user generated photos and if that makes a difference, how do you go about this? You have a business listing. They don't really have any. They're a restaurant or whatever it is, something that's really photo centric and they don't have that user generated photo stock. What do you do about that? Yeah, depends on how active your client is willing to be <laughs> um, in terms of uh, <laughs> trying a to dollar off every anybody, taco yeah. for every image you take. <laughs> You said it, not me, but <laughs> so, well, so I think um, encouraging a culture within the, within the location of, of sharing photos. Um, so something 
uh, really smart that I've seen is people um, like having like a TV up on their, uh, just kind of in their dining room or wherever and um, <clears throat> showing user submitted photos. So you can see those definitely like um, have employees leave them not on site, not connected to your Wi-Fi, far, far away from the actual, <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't, um, well, edit that out no um, so, <laughs> yes <laughs> so edit that out but um yeah so so basically um i would say to to encourage people to leave photos and um kind of encourage that culture of or showcase that culture of leaving photos in your reviews and, and sharing them on their listings something really smart that i've seen businesses do is uh kind of having a tv in their dining room that showcases um kind of like featured photos on the right, listing right. Um, that way it kind of gives people the, like plants the seed in their head, like, oh, this is something that I should do. That food is really delicious. I <laughs> want to share that. Um, and kind of like, kind of um, encouraging them to share in that way. Um, that's just, I'm talking specifically about Google, but on Yelp, I mean, you know, Yelp is, anyone who works in local search knows that Yelp is pretty uh, bullish on their terms and conditions in terms of asking for reviews. Um, basically like you're blacklisted. If you get caught for it, you can get in a ton of trouble. Interestingly, though, I learned this from uh, Jason Brown, that you can't, it's not against their terms of service to request for someone to leave a review or like sh tell someone that they should, or sorry, not a review, a photo, but um, they can tell, tell someone to leave a photo. And right next to the share a photo button is the leave a review button on Yelp. So just kind of like guiding people <laughs> to that place within their terms of service and kind of showing them that, uh, this is something that you should be doing. And oh, by the way, you're here, you might as well leave a review anyway. Um, those are definitely uh, two ways that I've seen people be successful in, in driving that kind of behavior. So basically, if your main source of clientele, if you're a restaurant, is the early bird special for like people over, I don't know, 60, 70, 80, you're kind of screwed when it comes to photos. Uh, you're going to have a harder time. <laughs> Maybe you go after the grandchildren that Excuse are. Excuse me, can I get a picture of your plate for you? And just, I'll upload it for you. This is a cell yeah, phone and it takes pictures. Your Google account. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that's really interesting, though. I never really, I never thought of that before. The number of looking at the number of um, number of uh, images in the listing, very interesting. So, okay, let's jump back a little bit. I want to ask you: when you're setting out on this journey to find your local competitors, what are some of the ways you're you're starting off to do that? How do you go about doing that? Where do you start? Yeah, so I start with a pretty robust keyword list, and I think that's the kind of the foundation of all of this. Because um, when you're doing this type of analysis, if you're putting garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. So it's really important to spend some time uh, thinking about all the services that you have, all the things that you might want to show up for, um, and also making sure that the right types of SERP features show up for the queries that you're trying to capture. So um, you might be a local business that has some really niche service offering that just doesn't trigger a local pack. Like if Google doesn't think that that's a localized query, you're never going to rank locally for it. That just is what it is. <laughs> um, unless they flip a switch, which happens from happens. time to time. Um, but I think, yeah, it, it sure does. Um, but yeah, I think paying attention to um, the intent behind the queries that you're, uh, that you're researching, but really doing, putting a lot of time into the, um, like the foundational keyword research to understand what you're even analyzing is, is the first step. So when you're looking at the intent, um, I'm assuming obviously you're looking at this, is there a local intent altogether, but beyond the, the, the fact that is there, is there not a local intent when it comes to intent, you use the word intent way too many times in that sentence. Um, what are you looking for? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm looking at the types of sites that are ranking. Um, so at Google analyzes billions of data points a day and has a lot invested a lot of money and a lot of smart people into developing an algorithm to give people exactly what they're looking for. Um, so I can tell a lot by uh, behind about the intent behind a keyword um, by the types of sites that rank there. So say, for example, um, I'm doing research and I'm, I'm looking at a head term and I see like Wikipedia and WikiHow and sites like that ranking. Um, to me, that is probably too top of funnel because I, I'm going to have a hard time getting somebody to take action on something that is just like strictly informational sites showing up. So uh, kind of from a local perspective, sometimes that's true for the uh, kind of the local equivalent of that. Sometimes that's true for like those Yelp, um, like top 10 uh, 
ranking locations, like right, those right. types yeah, of pages yeah. that show up on Google. Like that's not really showing too much about the the intent behind that. It's just saying Google's like, oh well, this is localized, so here's a Yelp result that shows local results. Like it doesn't tell me too much about um, the actual competitors that are that are going to be showing up there. So organic results, and then also. Uh, to infer intent, I'm looking at the types of features that are showing up too. So I'm looking at featured snippets, I'm looking at knowledge graphs, I'm looking at people also ask. All of those things are sort of indicators into what Google thinks the person um, who's conducting that search actually wants to do with the information that they're seeing on the page. So feature snippets would be, I'm assuming, bad? What's that? Feature snippets would be bad for the most part? Yeah, it's yeah, it, it it would be more like it's probably not something unless I think that I can answer that question. Right. I can get my client to answer that question um, through content. It's probably not something that at least on a local level I would want to target. But um, if the featured snippet or the answer isn't really satisfactory and I think I can get my client to build something that answers it better, yeah, I'm going to go for that. Is it really worth it from a local perspective to get into that feature snippet? So great, some guy, you, you're selling tacos in, I don't know, lower Manhattan. And some guy in Wichita, Kansas sees it. Great. You answer his question about tacos, but the chance of him coming to visit you are slim to none. Yeah, I think it depends. Um, for like a localized query, probably not going to really move the needle for you if you're not in you know, the right geo. But um, from a branding perspective, if somebody in Manhattan sees that, I think that would definitely be worthwhile. Right, right. Cool. So the people also ask, Box, it's funny that you're looking at, it's funny that you mentioned you're looking at that because it shows up with everything. So what, what can you actually learn from looking at the people also ask box? Yeah, so I can learn what else people want to know. Um, so if I'm looking, you know, this is a little bit broader than local specifically, but if I'm a localized website and I see a mix of PAA boxes and uh, and local results, that at least gives me a little bit of insight into what other queries and what other topics um, Google is deeming relevant. So I can create content on my own site to kind of build up that, that relevancy and actually, uh, you know, answer people's questions. That combined with uh, reviews, obviously, are a goldmine for right. getting information about what people actually want to know and what questions they have. Oh, you know, you just reminded me of something you said earlier that I wanted to ask you about. So you said before that you're looking at reviews and the language used in reviews. What exactly are you looking mm -hmm. for when you do that? Because that's really interesting. Yeah. So when we are looking at that, we're looking for a couple of things. Um, sentiment around specific topics. So if I have a lot of one-star reviews that all mention wait times, um, that's something that I probably want to address operationally in my locations. Um, on the flip side, if, if we're doing something really well, that can help us kind of know what to highlight as a strength. Another <laughs> favorite that we, we do with that kind of reanalysis is we look at um, competitors' reviews and where they seem to be falling short. So um, say, you know, my competitor, their customers are always complaining about their wait time. Um, I might highlight on my own site that <laughs> our wait time is guaranteed less than 10 minutes. So if anybody's reading those reviews um, and they come to my site, they're like, oh, I, this is better. Our, <laughs> like, our wait time is 10 minutes less than Bob's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're always faster than them. But but yeah, I mean, it's it's an insight. You know, it's, it's good and competitive intel that you might not get unless you're like secret shopping around your competitor's businesses. <laughs> Got you. Okay, so now to ping pong a little bit, when you talk about SERP features or even yeah. about reviews, even about reviews, is any of this you know, vertical specific? Yeah, I think some of it is. I mean, and well, what what do you mean? Is any of it? You know, you have so many different. Um, you have so many different features that show up for so many different types of queries, right? For um, I would imagine like PLAs would show up for a commerce query, and there could be a local intent along with that that might be a competitive problem for you. Or um, informational queries, you could, so you're going to have your feature snippets, you're going to have your your um, people also ask, but local packs do show up, sometimes below the fold, which is also weird. Mm -hmm. So again, like, it, it, does it, is it, is it, this applies usually to this type of, you know, for fast food restaurants, this is one type of scenario. For a local accountant, there's a totally different equation that I'm looking at. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. The short answer is yes. I want to talk a little bit about the local pack being farther down on the page yeah. because that is interesting. And I'm noticing that happen more and more. Yeah. Um, I interpret that as Google not being sure what the query actually is. Like, so that's, that's pretty common actually when um, with any, especially with like head terms, I noticed that a lot um, where it's just like a hodgepodge of there's 
going to be a, a knowledge graph on the right side. There's going to be maybe maybe a feature snippet just answering a question that's vaguely related. The map might be at the bottom of the page. I saw a map on page two recently, Seriously? which was wow. like very confusing to me. You've been to page um, two? Like, yeah, right? What? Know, yep. the, What's the that like? Side, but I know it's, you know, it's confusing. Apparently <laughs> there's maps there now. <laughs> um, that's, that's really that's casting a wide net. Yeah, I know. I which, so, but to me, that says like Google's like I don't know what this person wants. And when I, anytime <laughs> I see a mix of um, a mix of organic SERP features, that's what I'm. That's what I'm understanding. And then if you look, a lot of times if you look at like the um, the related questions down at the bottom or the related searches, um, you'll see Google trying to like nudge you in a particular way. Like one is a little bit more commerce related, one is a little more informational, like they'll, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. And then as you continue down that path, um, it'll get a little bit more specific with the types of search or the types of results that it's showing. But um, your question about uh, like commerce related, so we'll talk a little bit about like retail and kind of what that looks like these days. Google will try to sell you anything. So if you see, <laughs> I think if you see product listing ads or um, PPC on something like that just objectively doesn't make sense. Like that isn't too much of a signal for me. That's just Google being greedy and their their business. They have to make money. I get that. Um, but I don't read too much into the presence of paid search features because I think that Google will always try to show a paid result whenever it can. That's really interesting. That makes I've seen. I can't remember what it was. I think it was for Skyscanner. I can't remember. The query was take a trip to Venus, something like that. And there was an ad from Skyscanner that showed up. Like that's. Yeah. Does it, you know, that's a little bit too <laughs> responsive, Google. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's good stuff. They are uh, always happy to monetize. Someone will click, though. Someone will click on that. Yeah, someone. someone. I'm, I'm sure if I see I'll pay for it, and I highly doubt that person will book a flight, but maybe. They'll pay. You know, but I don't know if they're doing, like, SpaceX these days, but. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Really, Skyscanner is way ahead of the curve on that, it appears. Nothing to do with <laughs> Google showing ads inappropriately. Um, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. That never happens. I have to ask you about neural matching. Been mm -hmm. the burning topic in local SEO recently. So, for those of you unfamiliar, it was on December second, I think Google announced that um, they've applied neural matching to um, local, and that's why everybody's rankings are going crazy. Even though they weren't local rankings, but that's why your rankings are going crazy all throughout November. Fine. One of the um, uh, I guess advents of this, one of the consequences of this is that Google now better understands um, if a business is relevant or not, even though the title description of that business may not seem to be as, um, that's what I'm looking for, specific to the query as you may have thought it would or need to be. What's the general impact of of neural matching at the local level? I mean, honestly, not a ton, not a ton. Um, in the data that I've been looking at. I love it. Uh, Everyone freaks out. You're so, like, not a ton. No, it's so it's so. This is, I think, this is a a symptom of the the types of local air quotes local businesses that um I work with and my role at here is just very different than a lot of the people who are working with the smaller like SMBs of the world. Um, so my a little bit about like my my client base that might be helpful context for people is we are typically working with um like national chains and uh, multi-location businesses. So I don't very often track um, rankings at the super, super granular level on an ongoing basis. I use it as like a barometer, mm -hmm. but we're not looking at every single keyword and every single zip code because that would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars a year for our clients. Like that would just be ridiculous. Right. If you wanted to do that, by the way, I wouldn't be unhappy about that because that would be like great for yeah. us. But yeah, it I would, understand I mean, where you're coming do. from. We, we do it for some clients and some folks are willing to invest the money to do that. And it is a useful, it's a useful like lagging indicator of if what we're doing is, is working. Yeah. But is it really worth it? Because it's so, it's too day to day. Does it really, it's too, it's too much. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So we usually, if anything, we usually will do like weekly. Right. Right. Um, just to understand how we're doing. And if, if we're falling off drastically across the board, then like, you know, something's going on that we need to address. Probably we like locked something from <laughs> Google, but um, typically like, so we're not, I'm not looking at data 
granularly enough that would show me the kinds of fluctuations that people were seeing. And I think there were, there was a lot of movement in, when was that, in like November when that rolled out? Yeah. Um, there were a lot of fluctuations on keywords that I imagine people cared a lot about, but I think the, the effect, hope my, what I hope the effect of neural matching is, is that it gets better results for people. Um, based on the context that the websites provide. So kind of stepping away from just the just the business titles and, oh, Lord helps this is <laughs> Google step away from using business titles as the primary ranking factor. I love those. No, no, they're great. <laughs> Be- best, best locksmith, New York, New York, best, best locksmith. Yeah, right. totally, with emojis in it. <laughs> right. yeah, I love perfect. that. No, yeah. don't get rid of that. <laughs> definitely your real business name but i mean but that stuff that stuff does work and it's so frustrating that it's so easy to spam and like you see immediate results from that like i've tested yeah. that i have not never on a client never on a client right. uh <laughs> listing but like i have a couple of listings around that i i play with um for my own testing my own knowledge and like the minute literally 10 minutes after i add a keyword to a business name and get it approved it ranks differently like it just it's laughable and for for as advanced yeah like for as advanced as people like to think google is like it's not with stuff like that like the algorithm is not that smart there are certain areas exactly i don't understand it i checked um i used to do property management in new york city 20 years not 20 years ago i'm being um 15 years ago and so i know a lot of the plumbers in new york city because we used to use them a lot and when you search for a plumber in New York City, I'm like, where, who are these people? I don't know any of these people. This is really strange. And we actually did an experiment. We, we sat around the office for a while trying to call these plumbers. And they're not actual plumbers. They're, they're hotlines uh-huh. where they connect you to a plumber, but they're not plumbers. Yep. And it's amazing that there's so yep. many of them at the top of the, of the, of the listing chain. Yeah, they're, they're a legion. They're modern day uh, geniuses. Yeah. I mean, it's they're really... geniuses. Yeah, it's, it's, one way, it's one way to make money. And I'm sure they're raking it in because especially for um, for industries like that, like home service industries that are need to have immediately, like plumbers, locksmiths, lawyers are, are really competitive with that too. Um, when you, you're searching for them because you need somebody fast. So like, and I've, I've been in that situation. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm maybe skimming reviews like to make sure they're not going to like mug me when they show up. No, no, no. You're just like, please, are you open right now? But yeah, pretty much. Like, can I get in touch with you and will you come? get me out of whatever situation I'm in. And and people know that. And that's that's, you know, been true for as long as services have been a thing. Like I don't think that's to, you know, distinct to SEO. I think that's just marketing in general. People are gonna try to exploit needs. But my hope is that um that the any with any Google algorithm update, my hope is that they're getting closer to actually mapping to what people want. Uh, and and sunsetting some of the things that have been really easy to uh, to spam in the past. Do you find that's a problem at the multinational level? Or if you're dealing with multinational brands, does that really come into play? Uh, not so much. That's good. Um, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see competitors pop up that are confusing, and usually, a lot of times, if it's like a smaller business, it's because they're winning spamming in some way, and that's that's not always fair to say for every every industry, but for um, a lot of like retail and stuff like that. We don't really have to worry too much about that. Yeah, you know, I, I love that every single conversation around local ends up with local spam. <laughs> I, just, I didn't even intend that for that to happen, but it always does. Always, <laughs> it does because it's it's such a problem. And it's I mean there are, there are a lot of people out there fighting the good fight. I know Joy um, Hawkins, Jason, like they've been Colin Nielsen, like the, all those guys have been awesome at I think raising. The issues to Google, um, like Blumenthal is another one that comes yeah. to mind, like folks that just really stay on top of that and make a point to be heard. Um, and Google trusts them, you know, they, they listen to them, they take their feedback. So I think it's just really a matter of the technology catching up with what users are noticing. I mean, I think, what was it, a couple of years ago, Google admitted that they kind of missed the boat on mobile and they it took off faster than they expected it to. I think that local goes hand in hand with the rise of mobile. I think that they just didn't invest what they needed to, to get their local search algorithm to the point that their core search algorithm was. And we're unfortunately feeling the effects of that, but I do think they're working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. (laughs) I say say that as a stepchild. So I know exactly what that means. Um, (laughs) (laughs) 
but I have to. I have a little fun little question Sorry. I want to ask you. When I saw this. Um, yeah. And before I do that, I have to ask the obligatory cliche question. Outside of search and outside of even of the digital world, what do you? What should you be thinking about when analyzing local competitive field? Outside of digital, um, you can do outside of search. That's a hard I, question. I, yeah, even outside of search, I, I think just like brand footprint is really important. Um, and I think that that's something that gets translated to search. Um, so a proxy for measuring that in search is like looking at search volume, um, either nationally or, or localized search volume, and to kind of understand how people perceive the, the brands and like how they're specifically searching them out um, versus the services that they offer. So I think, you know, you can't, especially locally, um, you can't discount things like billboards and right. flyers and things like that. Like that's, that does get stuck in people's heads. Um, so outside of digital, I think that's probably a little bit of a cop-out answer, but it, it is, I think, it, at its core, still really important. <laughs> that works. I have a fun little game that I like to do with my guests. I call it Optimize It or Disavow It. So if you're a first-time listener... It basically goes like this. I'm going to either offer you two really good options and zero-sum world, so you're going to be stuck choosing one good option over another good option, which is hard. Or I give you two really bad options, and you're stuck choosing one crappy option over another crappy option, and that's just uncomfortable. So this is a choreographed version of optimize it or disavow it. So in a world, <laughs> you're like, oh, no, what I get myself into? It's not, it's not so bad. <laughs> in a world where the only thing you can look at when analyzing a local competitor would be Google posts or the Google My Business photos within the business listing, what would you do to determine, which one would you choose, rather, to determine which competitor is most relevant or most threatening to you? Definitely photos. I, I think I you kind of answered um, that. I, I, I messed that up because I didn't know <laughs> about photos. <laughs> wow. So that was an easy one. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, I can explain why I don't look at posts. Okay. Yeah, that's, that'll work. That might be helpful. Yeah. Good save. So I think um, I think posts are a nice idea. Um, and I think that they're good real estate. And it's a good way to promote um, what you want on your listing and hope that people engage with it. I have not seen a ton of engagement on posts, um, but it's kind of similar to what we just talked about with like billboards. Like just because I can't measure that, what is that? The McNamara fallacy, like just because I can't measure right, it right. tangibly doesn't mean that it's not important. Exactly. Um, so I think that it's, just, I kind of look at them as more like, like social media, like just visibility. Um, but uh, I don't think that Google is looking at those as an engagement signal in, um, in actual like ranking decision making um i do believe that google looks at photos and engagement mm -hmm. with photos as a as a ranking signal yeah that makes a lot of sense for sure i mean look there are businesses where i never look at the google my business um the google the google posts but let's say a sports team i always look at the google posts so yep 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 awesome it's a good feed good info feed but yeah yeah awesome Thank you so much for that, Corey. That was really, really dynamic and wonderful conversation. Thank you for taking the time to come on, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on. It was fun. My pleasure. Bye-bye. And we are back to your regularly scheduled Insert SEO podcast. No, I really meant no dig to Philly sports fans. <laughs> right. No, I don't. I really think it's <laughs> Philly sports fans. It's just an easy target. Okay. That said, that was a lot of fun, very informative, and Corey, Corey was a great sport. Um story behind the scenes hopefully the editing team makes the story make sense are you listening editing team <laughs> so uh, there was a large time gap between some of our guests right i may be a few hours ahead they may be a few hours behind right. which means that sometimes i'm recording at night from home right with my kids around <laughs> uh I, which has never been a problem until our interview with Corey. oh no my, my wife was trying to give one of the kids a bath and he was not having it. And he ran out of the bath naked. <laughs> He's screaming <laughs> around the house. And you hear this, like, what is that noise? I'm like, yeah, that's one of my kids. I'm really sorry. She's very cool about it. So It, it reminds me of the uh, BBC interview with the professor. In yes, yeah, that's basically what it was. <laughs> uh, so hopefully the editing team took out the screaming in the background because we recorded two tracks, which is why, <laughs> which is why we do that. Right. Um, but thank you, Corey, for being a good sport. Yeah. And also, thank you for being entertaining by burning your own city down when your team wins something. <laughs> anyway, um, should we do the news? Yeah. Okay, Sapir, please take it away with the news. Okay. 
Well, guess what's the first news item? Guess, Morty. Guess. I'll just say it. Oh, Houston got caught cheating <laughs> by banging We're on a freaking garbage drum that. No. and got fined five million. Shh. No baseball? No. Okay. okay. By the way, so, if you love baseball, it's a great story. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Google released another. You hear that? It's out of a garbage drum. Boom, bang. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Stop it. No one cares about baseball. Okay. Who am I? <laughs> it's a curveball coming. I'm the Astros. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. Okay. Google released another core update. That's the news? Yes. That's it? That's the first one. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> I think we covered that. Thank you. Okay, I know. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> Just saying, you know. Okay. Mm -hmm. The colorless ad labels and favicons of the mobile SERP are now on desktop, officially. Yay. <sighs> <laughs> Which basically means if you're a small brand, this is my point of contention with I the mobile like version. It I like First off, I hate the look. Oh my my, my brain is dizzy. And if your <laughs> antivirus software puts a little green check next to the URLs, <laughs> which mine does, okay, the, the whole circle is like a freaking Jason Pollock picture. <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, it's exactly what it looks like. Oh, I'll spray here it's color. It's modern spray art, there. okay? It's ridiculous. Postmodernism. What the it's hell were they art. thinking? I don't understand. I know what they're thinking. It adds, whatever. <laughs> Point is, it looks like a Jason Pollock painting if you have your antivirus check marks there. And if you're a small brand with your favicon there and a big brand with their very visible, very recognizable favicon, you're going to lose and that sucks. I don't like that. Okay. I'm very vocally against the favicons. We know. We don't care. Let's move uh, on. Okay. Sorry. Google's. <laughs> I'm the Houston Astros. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. What's the matter? You can't read now? <laughs> this is the best version of this we've ever done. Okay. Just so you know, the Houston Astros were cheating by stealing signs and banging on a metal garbage can, which is why I keep banging on the mic. Listen, no one cares about baseball. Keep, yes, I have to explain Stop what we're it. doing. I don't okay. care if they care, but I have to explain what we're doing. Okay, Marty, let's move on. Yeah, I'm trying to. Google's evergreen Google bot that keeps up with the latest version of Chrome appears to be live. Stop it. <laughs> That's good stuff. It's not. No, the Google uh, bot thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Wow. We were something in the brownies this morning. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Let's move on. I'm waiting. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> this is... Oh, yeah. You're, 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 you all right? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Simulation for smart bidding has come to Google Ads. Now users can see their return on ad spend for smart bidding campaigns, meaning they can they can see how a change in the return targets will impact things like clicks, uh, costs, etc. Yeah, that's really good for right. yeah. It's very helpful. Okay. Okay, the Google Rich Results test will now tell you if your third-party embedded page content will or will not load. That's very good. Very helpful if you're embedding video content, all sorts of content. Right. Very helpful. Very helpful. Very good. Right. Finally. Finally. Google has introduced a popular... <laughs> <laughs> I cannot! <laughs> oh, uh, are you done? Yep. Okay. For now. Lastly, Google has introduced a popular product carousel on mobile that will feature queried product from ho from a host of websites. So this is bad news for the Bears. <laughs> we don't. What? What is Bears? Is it another it's baseball a, team? No, no. Stop. <sighs> Calm the freak down. It doesn't. It's an English American idiom. <laughs> Bad news bears. Okay. <laughs> come from a come from an old movie. Stop banging the microphone. What are you, the Astros? Okay. It's this is bad news. If let's say you Google, well, here's what's gonna happen. Okay. Let's let me explain. Let's flush this out. Okay. You search for um sneakers. Mm -hmm. Now before, let's say there were um, all things being equal, nothing, no assert features showed up, which is not true. But Nike would be the first result you would see. Let's say, and you would Probably. go to the Nike site right. and you would look for all of Nike's shoes. Right. Right? Would you see um, shoes from Reebok? No, it's, no, not. it's yeah. the Nike website. Yeah. Now, what you're going to get on mobile, at least, is theory theoretically, is a, a a scrollable product carousel with shoes, some with a Nike URL or leading to Nike's site, let's say, or leading to a Nike product or coming from Nike's site, however you wanted to 
to find this. Some from Adidas, some from Reebok, some from Puma, some from Skechers, some from Keds. I, Converse, I'm, I'm running out of shoe companies. <laughs> but it means that instead of you being number one, you know, click, people clicking on your website and, oh, there it is, all my shoes. You're going to have a lot of stiff competition in this product carousel. Right. And it means tracking this will be important. And I hope that a tool like ours, maybe, will come up with a way to track that. Yeah. That would be a great idea. I will. Hope the development team is listening. <laughs> Good with the news? Yeah. All right. Well, we can keep banging drums and garbage cans no. for the rest. Of- Please but don't. we have the fun SEO send-off question. Oh, yeah, don't do the fun. music yet. Because that didn't work well. What didn't work? Well? He, there's no there was no pause for him to roll the music. Oh, sorry. That's for La- pause. Our editing friend, Levy, to roll the music. Okay. Okay? So let's give Levy an easier job, shall we? Yeah. Okay. Here's our fun SEO send-off question. <laughs> music should be over now. Okay. Okay. This question comes from Sapir. <laughs> Disclaimer. <Okay. laughs> Okay, if Google was a Disney princess, which princess would it be? <laughs> what? <laughs> Listen, I'm running out of ideas, okay? Nope, not okay, but okay. Um, Sure, uh, you want to go first? <laughs> you have an answer, right? <laughs> well, vaguely. I mean, vaguely. I'll, <laughs> I'll go with Mulan because okay. she kicks which one ass. Is she? Mulan, the Chinese one. Sorry, I'm not up to my Disney, on my Disney princess. Anyway, and Google's core updates. I know she. Wait, so I didn't know she. Was, wait, I know she is. Uh, she, I know she's a princess. I had no idea about that part. <laughs> Actually, okay. she wasn't a princess. She was like a general. That did count. It all counts. Army. Okay, so why why is she like Google? I just said it. I didn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's funny. I didn't hear you. She was like a warrior, okay? Oh, and so like she a kicked warrior? a lot of ass. Right. And Google. Is a warrior kicks ass. No, it, like, yeah, it smashes yeah. all kinds of, you know. Stuff. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> no, very like. Very definitive here. <laughs> like, right now, on the algorithm oh, up, updates. Yeah. Updates, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot Smashing of s- websites. Exactly. Cutting the pieces. Well, that's all I have. Mulan. Yeah, Mulan. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say Elsa. Right? <sighs> Because that's the one from Frozen, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I, I was like stuck with it, like they, that or like Tinkerbell or something. I don't know. Tinkerbell princess? No. Um, anyway. Uh, Elsa. Because Elsa's cold as ice. And when Google has to make a change, they could be as cold as ice. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. It, it's not. Because uh, she's not cold as ice? It's just, no, the name of the movie is just, Frozen. What? Why is this? The name answer? of the movie is Frozen. What am I not understanding here? <sighs> Hold his eyes. Really. All right. That'll do it for us in the Insert SEO Podcast. Don't forget to tune in next week for an all-new episode of the Insert SEO Podcast. What were you expecting me to say? It's been in search because we're all in search of, of something. something. Bye-bye now.